Hey guys, it's Justin from Canova, and today we're going to talk about how to identify yellow belly in ball pythons. All right guys, yellow bellies are actually one of the oldest mutations in the ball python industry. I remember getting into them so early in my journey, it was the early 2000s, so basically 20 years now of development of this project, and they're still one of the most difficult to identify. So let's look at a yellow belly versus a normal and see the difference. Okay, so here in my hands, I have one yellow belly ball python and one normal ball python here. And I think you can already see they're pretty hard to tell apart. Now, yellow belly is an incomplete dominant mutation, which means that it's passed directly to the offspring and it does have a homozygous form, which is the ivory we'll show you in a little bit. But let's talk about how to see the differences between these. We'll start with the normal. The normal has kind of a standard, we call it like wild type pattern. This is exactly how you'd expect to find a ball python in the wild. And they're really quite beautiful as their own. There's you know, kind of a combination of browns and blacks and the pattern's variable. The bellies are typically quite white. They have a little bit of patterning here along the, along the belly. And that black you see is kind of the bottom of what we call the alien heads. The alien heads are these like, it looks like a little alien heads coming up the sides of the snake. So the bottom of that pattern typically has some black barring and we have the white belly in between. That's kind of the standard look. Now the yellow belly differs just slightly. Now the first thing you might notice is that they're just a hair brighter on top, typically. Typically, you see a little bit of color difference between the yellow belly and the normal, and this one is, I would say, you know, 10%, you know, brighter yellow, like pale, paler brown than the normal. The next thing is yellow bellies do have a slightly yellow tinge to the belly, typically. Now, that's extremely variable. Sometimes they have quite white bellies, and sometimes you can say, wow, that's almost orange. Like, like there's a yellow belly line that's called orange belly. But the main difference on them is when you see, look at the side here, the alien heads are typically separated by some quite large, what we call flames. And these are the kind of the orange coming up the side. The result of those flames is the bottom of the alien heads get compressed down to a point, and they end up with a very kind of like a checkerboard um, pattern on the edge of the belly. So we're on the normal, we had some of these like black bars like we talked about, these larger, longer black strips along the bottom of the alien heads. The yellow belly has the flames and then a very checkered pattern and the clear pattern in between. Now, as you can almost see some of the little checkers actually dropping down into the belly there. This is all kind of the variability of it. But typically what you're seeing is the flames on the side, a lighter snake, and that checkerboard pattern on the sides here instead of the solid black bars that the normals have. So a standard yellow belly is actually quite normal looking, we've established that, but amazingly the homozygous version, or we call the super version of the incomplete dominant, is a very not subtle snake. This is an ivory ball python, and all this is is the super form, the homozygous version, of the yellow belly. So if you were to breed two snakes with yellow belly together, you get an ivory. Now, a lot of people see an ivory and they think, oh, it's an all-white snake. It's not an all-white snake. They have this really faint yellow stripe down the back, and a lot of times it's bordered in purple. Purple scale is a gorgeous kind of bordering all the way down. And the whole snake itself is kind of a pale off-white. It's not a pure white at all. Of course, there's no remnants left on the belly of that yellow belly checkering or anything. And you can still see the full pattern of the head though and everything. And it's not really the same as say like a blue-eyed Lucy or a black-eyed Lucy where the snake is pure, pure white. So now we're gonna see how yellow belly interacts with some other basic incomplete dominant genes, starting with pastel. Okay, so pastel was one of the earliest incomplete dominant genes as well. In fact, it was out there kind of even before um, yellow belly really took off. And here we have a couple combinations. We're gonna start with the regular pastel. Of course, this is just very bright yellow. That's what pastel is known for. Initially, they were called pastel jungles, but it's got some nice black and yellow. It kind of replaces the brown with yellow. Now, looking at the yellow belly version, we're gonna look for the same features that we saw on the yellow belly versus normal. The first thing you notice here, the difference in flames between the pastel and the pastel yellow belly. So see right off, you can see all the different flames here. The alien heads narrow down towards the belly, and then you have this amazing checkering all the way down the belly of the animal, all on the sides here, and a really clear belly. A lot of mutations actually create a clear belly on, on ball pythons, but yellow belly is gonna, of course, bring that clear belly and bring up the edging a little bit and still give you that checkering 
along the belly. Now compare that to the standard pastel belly, which again is a relatively clear belly, but kind of has the regular kind of black markings that are kind of interspersed randomly versus that heavy checkerboard pattern and the flames of the pastel yellow belly. Next we're gonna do is fire. Fire is another really common incomplete dominant and this is actually a really hard combination because the regular fire basically looks like a normal, just brighter, but the fire itself adds a lot of checkering to the belly. So you see how much really kind of heavy edging there is and it is kind of variable and almost checkered. And so I see so many snakes that get misidentified as fire yellow belly because somebody hatches it and they say, oh, look at all that checkering. This one's gotta be yellow belly. But when you combine yellow belly with fire, the result is actually much more extreme than that because you have both the fire and the yellow belly both bringing checkering to the table. So first of all, look here at the top. The yellow belly is brighter. Look at all those flames. The comparison's really extreme. But then check out the belly. The yellow belly fire, the combining of the checkering gives this really unique look where you get a pure, almost piebald white there in between in the center of the belly scales and the edging comes really high up on the sides and the effect is doubled. And so with the fire, you really gotta watch for the big flames, the doubling of the checkering. If you think, oh, it's a little subtle, this is a, it's a little subtle, then it's just a yellow belly or it's just a fire, but not both because this is a really nice combo when you put them together. Okay, so spot nose is another one that's a little difficult to identify with yellow belly because spot nose has so much belly pattern on its own. So we're gonna start with the normal spot nose here. So this is a beautiful spot nose and they're just great because they're very golden looking. They have got really strong pattern, they have amazing um, head stamp and they have a very interesting belly already. Again, this is why we get a lot of misidentification of spot nose and yellow belly because you see it does have a couple flames here coming up in between the alien heads. It actually does have a lot of checkering along the edges of the belly. So people might see that and if you don't haven't seen the combos up close, you might think, oh, maybe that's the yellow belly spot nose. But thankfully, yellow belly is really extreme when you mix it with spot nose. And so when you actually do hatch a yellow belly spot nose, it's very obvious. First of all, it's much more gold and you see how much color and just darkness and deep contrast that the yellow belly brings in. The second thing, instead of having flames every couple alien heads, you have really strong kind of orange flames basically between every single alien heads, really bringing it up and accentuating it. And then thankfully you have a doubling of the pattern. So the, all that cool pattern you saw on the spot nose belly, when you add yellow belly, it doubles that effect and you have this really cool complex checkerboarding all along both sides of the snake, mixing into the flames and gives it a really nice kind of color. There's actually a lot of orange and yellow coming out in this belly, which again is why that is named yellow belly. It's just not a really strong yellow and it kind of is pretty variable. So you're looking for those other aspects like great flaming, great checkerboarding, but side by side, you can see it's actually pretty easy to tell the difference when you have both combos and the combination with the yell belly is extremely cool. And I'm looking forward to showing you guys what this looks like with the clowns because this is the base for almost all the amazing clowns we make, that spot nose and yell belly combination. So the last incomplete dominant mutation we're gonna show with yellow belly is black pastel. Another of the really, really cool combos that yellow belly is known for is the black pastel yellow belly. This is the regular black pastel. They're gorgeous, they're deep, they're dark chocolate browns, they're just, just pretty. They got nice reds to them. This snake is slightly, slightly in shed. So we'll just compare it here to the yellow belly version. We're looking for the same things. So check out right there, all the sides. In the black pastel, the flames all sort of combine because the alien heads float up and they're disconnected from the belly. So the flames all combine to kind of create one long string of kind of a, a reddish color all the way down the belly. And then of course you have this crazy edging. Now with yellow belly combines with that, it creates these white kind of, I call it popcorning, kind of along the edges of the belly. And you still have the center of the belly, a pure pied white. So it's a really cool combination. And just side by side, you can see between these two snakes, how big an effect yellow belly has. It makes it more orange overall. It gives these amazing cool flames with the floating alien heads. And just overall it makes a really beautiful combination 
And again, we're seeing here, think back to the Pompeii, you're seeing a spot nose, yellow belly, black pastel. These are all genes that work just wonderfully together and they bring out those deep dark reds that we see in projects like the Pompeii. All right, so these are gorgeous. We're gonna look at how yellow belly interacts with some of the most popular recessive mutations, starting with one of my favorites, piebald. Okay guys, we have a pied and a yellow belly pied here. We'll start with the regular pied. They're beautiful, they have saddles all over. We tried to get kind of a 50-50 white one. As you guys know, they're very variable and they have different percentages of white. But typically they have these saddles. They have nice, really nice brown markings on them and they're just pretty, they're very soft. They kind of transition down into the belly into a, into a pale orange. And then the belly of a pied is always completely white. Just a little bit of, there's been like two pieds I've ever seen that weren't completely white on the belly, so it's really unusual. The yellow belly is absolutely transformative. And this is honestly is one of the genes that really kind of shot yellow belly to the moon back when they first got popular. And I'm thankful to say that Canova were actually the first people to make the yellow belly pied. The biggest difference is, again, like most other things, it's brighter. It brings out more orange in the snake. But more than that, it has a really cool pattern effect. It has all this crazy pixelization, we call it. So you see how the pied has kind of nice, kind of smooth, almost like a bubbling in pattern. It's all very reasonable. Well, the yellow belly kind of takes it and just blows it up. You have this crazy pixeling all over. I would say it looks almost like Space Invaders, like it's an 8-bit video game or something where we have this just really interesting blowing up the pattern. So the kind of the standard black markings you have on either side of the stripe there, they've kind of just faded down like they're breaking apart and just falling down the sides. And combined with the actual extra brightness, this snake is absolutely insane and is, again, one of those most important base combos for the piebald gene. Now, whether you mix it with Orange Dream or Fire or Inchy or any of these others, Yellow Belly is probably the most consequential gene in pied for adding bright oranges in color. Also, the pixelization you see that kind of falls down the sides, the actual borders of the saddles themselves where the white meets the orange tends to be very jagged. It kind of looks like it's kind of dripping down and just every scale is either white or orange. It just doesn't kind of transition smoothly. Like you see on the regular pie, you kind of have a smooth transition in between the white and the orange, where these are kind of all over the place and you have all these pixels, essentially, these scales, these bright scales kind of mixing down into the white and like puncturing the white down. And it's a really cool look all the way throughout. All right guys, yellow belly clown time. You guys know I love the clown project. Most of the videos we show you guys are cool new clown combos. And yellow belly is one of the most key genes. We're gonna start looking at the regular clowns so we know what the baseline is and then we'll start looking at the differences between them. So clowns, they're black backed animals. This one's a little bit broken. It's got one band over the top or two, but typically they're completely black backed. They have these alien heads that have grown so large that now we have these little teardrops kind of showing down between them. So it's the opposite of flames, really. These teardrops are kind of slightly off color and that's why they got the name the clown because like tears of a clown dropping down the sides. Now, if you look at the belly, you'll see there's a lot of the features that you'd normally see in a yellow belly right there in a clown. Quite a bit of edging and it's very checkered, very busy. They have a little bit of pattern there in the center. You know, that's of course a little bit variable. Generally speaking, clowns have quite a bit of edging all the way down. And again, this is a little bit of a misleading to new keepers and they hatch out a clutch and they think, oh, which one's yellow belly? And they say, oh, I see checkering. That looks like a yellow belly checkering. Well, that would be misleading unless you actually got a real yellow belly clown in the clutch to compare. So without the comparison, it'd be really easy to think this is yellow belly. But when you look at a actual yellow belly clown, you see that it has a big difference. Now those teardrops you saw are bright red and they're much larger. So it's the opposite essentially of flames. So flames from are regularly coming up from the belly, and they still are but now they're taking over what we call the teardrops. That belly edging is far more extreme in the yellow belly clown where you have it higher up on the belly and just completely solid and it feeds into the bottom of all these red flames. So side by side you have the regular clown with a few kind of white teardrops coming down here and there versus the yellow belly with the red teardrop slash flames and you have a busy belly on the clown and you have the crazy crazy belly 
on the yellow belly clam. And so again, it just takes it up a notch, but you have to kind of be aware of that next level so you don't accidentally misidentify the standard belly on a clown as being yellow belly. Okay guys, we're into puzzle now. Now some of you may know that puzzle is not my strongest project. It's something I'm really excited about though for the future. It's an amazing project. And here we have two animals. One has yellow belly and one doesn't. So based on what you've learned so far, I think you can already guess which one's yellow belly. Now we have a little bit of not quite a direct comparable here because this one is hypo too. But we'll start with a regular puzzle. They are just absolutely gorgeous. They're, this is an OD puzzle. Um, so they have those like, kind of puzzle pieces pattern to them. They have a really unique head there and really wide eye stripes that drop down in front of the eye. And they're just gorgeous. They also tend to have a very patterned belly on the edges. You're probably sensing a theme here. It's very pretty. It's very um, blank in the middle and patterned on the edges. Now they do have a little bit of what we call flames, but they're quite white, I would say, of that white belly coming up on the sides, a little bit of popcorning. Now this is a hypo orange dream yellow belly puzzle. We have the same look of there. The hypo is giving it that ghostly look that changes it, but the pattern is not affected by hypo. The pattern here is just the orange dream puzzle plus yellow belly. You see that flaming has been completely extended down the sides because the yellow belly is affecting and trying to pull together all that belly pattern. And then the puzzle is fighting each other and it creates this really cool thing where all the pattern is again kind of orphaned or just floats up the sides and you have this really amazing complete popcorning with an orange flame that goes completely down the side and then that beautiful puzzle pattern on the top. And that's really what creates the amazing look of actual puzzle pieces is when you can kind of get that pattern to float like that in the puzzle project is absolutely gorgeous. All right guys, so we've shown you some of the kind of more simple interactions between incomplete dominants and recessives with yellow belly. Now we're gonna go a little bit more complex. We're gonna show when you combine recessives and incomplete dominance with yellow belly and how the effects it has. This is the Inchy Spot Nose Clown by itself and Inchy Spot Nose Yellow Belly Clown. And you can see right away the difference is pretty extreme between them. Now Spot Nose adds tons of pattern to the clown. It's really, really gorgeous. And it actually gives a little bit of red flaming here, which again might be a little misleading. The Inchy brings in some goldenness, but the Yellow Belly, as soon as you get it in there, you get this amazing pattern, which actually almost looks like a jaguar or something. Now we first hatched these a few years ago and we actually called them snorkel snakes. Now this one almost looks like a little devil though, doesn't it? It's got two horns there on top and a little face mask. They're so pretty. And then the flames that the Inchy and Yellow Belly and Spot those all working together. The flames it brings in are just so bright and so pretty that this is just an amazing base to build clown combos off of. And so many of our most amazing things that we've shown on our channel has been a combination of spot nose and yellow belly plus some other enhancing morphs to create an incredible, incredible combination. The key is to choose animals, stock animals that actually have yellow belly in them. Don't fall for some of the lookalikes or misidentified animals that don't actually create this extreme look that you're wanting. So next we have two lavender albino combos. Both of these are blackhead lavender albinos but one of them has yellow belly. So right off, you can see the two of them. This one is more white, kind of a deeper orange color, and it has the flames. Now, in the lavender or any kind of albino, the colors are essentially reversed, and so you're like seeing it in negative. So instead of the flames being like the red on a brown, you see this pink kind of coming up the sides from a checkered belly. Now, the checkers don't show so much on the lavender, but just compare it to the sibling here. Look at the sides on this, and you see this one does have a random flame or two, but not the consistency or the other factors like the color and the checkery on the sides. So he has one flame there, where this one has one between every single piece of pattern all the way down the snake. And again, it's those little things. You're never looking for one element in itself. You're looking for a combination of all the different features like checkering and brightness and clarity and flames all coming together. Um, any one by itself probably might just be a feature of that, either that specific snake or the mutations that it's with. All right, guys, the last combos we're gonna show you. And remember how I told you that yellow belly was so transformative in pied. And this is a great example because here we have a pastel OD Enchi pied. Now, Enchi has a lot of pattern to pies. It's a very low white pied. And then this animal only has one more gene and you guessed it, it's yellow belly. So we have a, just a crazy transformation here. It's brighter, it's cleaner, it's just more beautiful throughout. We talked a lot about how the 
pixelization that Yellow Belly brings into Pides. Now, Inchi is the opposite. Inchi smooths everything down. So we kind of lost some of that pixelization, but you see how the black in this is really, really strong. And the pixelization of the black here as it drops down the side really fades a lot more. And so you have this cool, like almost like ghost pattern in there. But then if you look at the edge of the belly, you see just the crazy edging and all the pixels and like that kind of the eight bit game look that we talked about here, where sometimes it drops down even really further. Or you could just reverse it and say, oh, it's the solar flares there. That's another way of kind of looking at it there. It's a really cool look compared to the much more tame edging that comes from the animal without yellow belly. So again, just you can see just the effect that yellow belly has, how important it is this very subtle gene has just kind of transforms all these different combos in ways that's really amazing. And we didn't even get into the freeway, highway stuff, that whole complex that Yellow Belly is part of. That's really, really cool as well. But hopefully this video gives you some good feedback on how to identify Yellow Belly in these genes. And even more importantly, why it's so critical to get Yellow Belly into these combos to make them more beautiful and brighter and just better overall. Hope that was really helpful and this gives you some pointers on identifying yellow bellies in your combos or in snakes you might be buying. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite snake is. And if you love this kind of video, be sure to like and subscribe so we can make more of how to identify these different combos in your ball pythons.